My name is Torsten Overgaard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world photographing and teach photography. Today I'm going to talk about white balance. So the problem with white balance is that our eyes adjust for the color temperature all the time, so we actually don't see it. But a camera sensor or a piece of film in a camera is set for daylight normally, so that really sees the colors. And let me just show you an example. So if I change the Kelvin here, which is the temperature, and then we're just gonna go all the way to 10,000. And you see how blue I am in the face, I look like a vampire, it's not aesthetic. And now let's go the other way to 2,000 Kelvin. And if you look at the flower in the background, you can see it's not a pretty flower anymore. And that's the key, that's the point, that when you have the Kelvin right, the color temperature right, then everything looks really beautiful. White balance is the thing that everybody knows about, but nobody uses. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that people haven't really understood it. The thing is that all cameras today, all digital cameras and video cameras, have white balance and usually it's set to automatic white balance. But let's just look at what is color temperature. So color temperature is also known as Kelvin and it's a guy in Scotland named Kelvin who discovered the color temperatures and gave them numbers. So daylight is 5400 Kelvin and for example tungsten light that you see in a theater or in the living room is 3200, so that's yellow light. You have uh, fluorescent light is have a green tint. And when the sun goes down in the late evening, then we get into really cold blue tones. There's also an interesting thing if you photograph late afternoon in a garden and you have, for example, kids playing in the garden and the colors look really beautiful, and you take photos of it, then you will see that when you look at the photo that it's really warm where the sunshine is, but in all the shadows by the trees and behind people, it's ice blue. And that is uh, the color balance, the white balance that plays. It's just mixed light. You cannot really do a lot about that, but it gives you an idea what you're dealing with and how what you see with your eyes is not the same as the camera scene. So white balance is not a new thing and the color of light is not a new thing. It's always been like that. In the film days, um, most film or almost all color film was calibrated to daylight because that's what it was used for. Most of the color photos were taken on holidays and on the beach and so on. So it looked good. It was only when you got inside and you had like a birthday party with candlelight or something, then everybody was red or orange in the face and you discovered that something going on that you don't really understand, so that was white balance. The way to correct for white balance back when we had film was that you would actually put on uh, filters like this one, so this is a blue filter, and you would put that in front of the lens, and then that would adjust for orange or yellow light, so it would actually be white light. The really professional photographers would have a uh, color meter, it looks like a light meter like this, I have a couple of them at home. Uh, so you simply just press this one and it tells you the Kelvin value and usually they will also give you a list of which fillers you would put on because these fillers exist as really strong, less than this and then you would say put on two of these and then put on one that is a little bit green and then it's going to be white balanced. So that's a very interesting way of doing it and because of all the work and all the fillers you needed to have, very few people did it. They just went with whatever worked there, but that would be the way to get the accurate colors. When we got digital video and digital cameras, then suddenly we got the possibility to manipulate it in the camera to calibrate the sensor. And if you haven't tried to take a photo, getting the right white balance, then it's really something that's going to change your view on how easy it is to make really good color photos with your camera. And it doesn't even have to be a great camera. It doesn't really matter. The fact that you get the colors right is make it look amazing. Here's an example of how important 
colors are together with uh, the magic of light. So this is a photo I like to show people to see how magic soft light with some sparkle defines the textures and everything and the small details. And also you'll see this photo that the colors are really colorful, but they're correct. And that's those two things, the magic of light and the correct colors, and of course the exposure, that's what makes this photo really work. So having the 100% correct colors is fundamental for aesthetic. It's very important in photographs. And that's as soon as you have the right colors on skin tones and on textures, not so much my black t-shirt, but it could be any other color or flowers or a red dress, then it becomes really important to have the proper aesthetic. The camera usually have uh, automatic white balance. And the way it works is that the camera try to pick up neutral white areas or neutral gray areas. So it reads that area and analyze and calibrate the camera so that piece of white paper actually becomes white and that means in photo terminology that means that it becomes white light. If you're photographing in the evening or in any other type of light or indoor or in a factory, then the camera has the possibility that you can go down to the white balance menu and then Usually when you go in here, you're going to have uh, a daylight setting, a preset for that. And you're going to have a cloudy, which would be cloudy weather outside. You have shadow, that would be a little bit colder than that, usually. You have tungsten, and that's usually what you have in uh, the living room. Also in uh, theaters, if you have old school theater lamps, that's tungsten. It's 3200 Kelvin. Then you have fluorescent warm light. So that's like greenish, warm yellowish light that you would have in factories, sometimes in hallways and companies. And you also have fluorescent cool. So that's also fluorescent light, but it's a cooler light. And then you have a setting for flash. So if you use a flash that has its own color temperature, then you set it for that. And then you can also usually go down to color temperature and set it manually. So you could set it to 3200 Kelvin, because now you shoot indoor in a living room. Or you could set it for 5400, 5600. That would be normal daylight. And when you get to uh, after sunset, also called the blue hour because the light is actually really blue, then you have around 8, 10,000, sometimes 12,000 Kelvin. There's an even better way of doing it, and that is that most cameras offer a manual white balance. And that's the one that when I do portraits or I do any architecture or any photo where I say, now I want to make sure that I get the colors right, then I'll simply just press the manual one. And usually the camera will then, depending on the camera, it will ask you to take a photo of white piece of paper or a gray card or something like that. And a gray card is like this one. This is a white belt card. And the point with this one is that it's neutral color. So what I would do is if I want to take a photo of this over here, I would hold the white balance card in front of it and I'll just set the camera to uh, the closest focus. It doesn't have to be in focus. I just have to see the card on it. Then I take a picture. And then I can see here I have the white balance card. In this case, with this camera, the Leica M240, I would have to scroll down so I have a cursor here onto the white balance card. And then I press set. And then the camera will say white balance is set. So what camera just did was that it read the light on this neutral color card or gray card and said, okay, there's so much blue light in, there's so much orange tones, and now it's gonna calibrate so it becomes neutral, and that means white. One of the problems with getting a card like this is that it's gray, and it doesn't have to be gray, it could also be white. You can actually use a piece of white paper, except that white paper sometimes have chemistry in it, so it's more bluish, or it's warmer, and so on, but it's still, a very good starting point. You can even have a white wall or a white door or something uh, that looks neutral. You can take a picture of that to set the white balance manually. The problem with the Craig Guard is that you go into a camera store and then that's going to be the confirmation that you're not the only one who haven't, haven't understood what white balance is because you ask, do you have a white balance card? And often they say, yeah, we have a gray card here. And this is a gray card, it's not a white balance card. If you see, it's not even the same gray. 
So this one is a Kodak gray card and what it's used for is to set the exposure because this has a mid-tone. It doesn't necessarily have a neutral gray tone, so this could be a little bit too warm or a little bit too cool. I also met people that got this great idea to go into uh, a paint store and then they get a gray paint sample, the ones you can get for free, and then they think they can use that as a white balance card. But you can't because even gray paint has warm or cool tones, so they're not necessarily neutral. So you're looking for something that is neutral. And I have the white balance card here that that's usually the one I use, and I have it in my pocket. It's the same size as a, as a credit card. So I always have it with me so I can take it out. And I usually keep this lanyard in it so I can easily find it amongst all the other uh, driver's license, credit cards, and what have you. So that's the way to set the white bands manually. And I only do it when I want to make sure that I get the right colors. And you will also see that I set the colors in the camera so that when I import the pictures into the computer, the colors are already right. Now, one of the things with setting white bands that I think is a misunderstanding, but it's still going to work. But that is that uh, the normal concept of how do you set the white bands is that you have somebody hold the card. So that means you photograph a model and you ask him or her, can you just hold the card? And also, this one have a thing here, so you can put it here with 45 degrees. So I could put it just here, and then I would take a photo of this, and then remove it and take more photos. So What's wrong with that, that idea is that you put in the card and then you shoot on automatic white balance. So the first photo is going to be right, or at least when you import it to Lightroom, then you have the first photo with the card and you can adjust the colors to that card and then you can copy paste that setting to all the pictures. But, and that's going to work. But in my opinion, it's just why don't you set it in the camera so all the pictures are the correct colors to begin with so you don't have to adjust anything in the computer. Small detail. Plus, also, you could say how you're going to set the white bands if you're going to take a picture of a building or whatever. Then you have to put the card over first and then go back, take a photo of it, and then go and take the card away. So that is a little bit uh, a funny way of doing it. That was my talk on uh, white balance. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to go deeper into the subject, then go to my website and pick up my ebook, The Freedom of Photographic Expression. If you want to go even deeper, do my extension course, the Torsten Overgaard new extension course. It has a lot about white balance, how to do it, and how it works, and the theory behind it. And before I leave you, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. It's free, and you even get a free ebook. And then you stay in the loop on what's coming out of new articles and videos and everything. Thank you.